Good evening guys and welcome back to PA Street Team. For those of you that are new here, my name is Derek. I want to welcome you to my channel and uh, welcome to the evening. Um, most of the time when I do my videos, they're on weekends and during daytime, but I actually had a couple free hours tonight and I figured it was a good time to start working on one of the problems I addressed in my recent video, Seven Things I Hate About My R32. And that is quite simply the headliner of this car. Um, lots of people like to recover their headliners, especially those involved in the Volkswagen and Audi aftermarket community. And this particular car, it had its headliner wrapped by the previous owner. He did it in like a blue, like a slate blue suede material. And the fabric is really pretty, but unfortunately because it's not a very forgiving material, there's lots of creases and wrinkles and cuts and it, it just isn't up to snuff. So. I'm going to give you guys a brief tour of what it looks like now and then kind of try to walk you through a step-by-step -step of how to remove the headliner and then you'll be able to watch my process as I recover it and then reinstall it. So let's get started. All right guys, so I'm going to start off by showing you some of the parts of the car that were recovered by the previous owner and I apologize for how dark the lighting is. I probably should have brought some extra lights with but I had assumed that the lighting in here was going to be enough but I guess not. So we're gonna start back here on the C pillar. You can see how it's kind of pulling away because probably a combination of a clip being broken here and also the fabric having a thickness that doesn't allow it to kind of line up, especially with these wrinkles and stuff. Um, like I said, it's a really nice fabric. It's just not really holding up well. You can see it's starting to bubble out. And actually looking at it through the camera, and really taking a look at it, I'm starting to see the issues where it's starting to come off as well. So that's definitely one of the reasons this needed to be addressed. The other side is very similar. You have all these wrinkles and again, it's pulling away. I mean, there's a huge gap here. So that's all stuff we're gonna have to try and figure out how to fix. Um, I think it'll probably just be an easy enough um, solution by peeling the old fabric off and any kind of backing or anything that was on there and then we'll see how that gets us. Uh, moving up to the front of the car, you can see from the outside how the blue had faded. And then if you get in here real close, you can actually see how it's kind of pulling away from the inside. And it looks like they just tucked the fabric, which is not necessarily a bad idea, but it just apparently didn't work with this fabric. So you can see all this coming in here and causing that issue. The headliner itself isn't very bad. I know it's almost impossible to see. I do apologize again. Um, let me grab a light. Hang on one second. Good old cell phone flashlight. There we go. So you can see it's like a bluish color and there's some wrinkles up around where the sunroof is. So it looks like a really heartfelt attempt <laughs> to do it. And uh, the guy that I bought this car off of, he was super nice. And I hope I get to meet up with him again sometime. And he even admitted it was like his first time doing it. And uh, I couldn't even imagine trying to do your first time in suede because there's absolutely no stretch or give. So he really got himself into, you know, a hard project. And quite honestly, with the experience level and the difficulty of the fabric. I think he did a pretty good job. I probably couldn't have done a better job myself. But with that said, it's time to start taking the roof apart. So before you begin the project, um, I did a little research on this to try and see what kind of tools we would need. And it seems pretty straightforward. Um, a Phillips head screwdriver, socket and socket wrench with a 17 millimeter socket that'll be needed for taking the uh, seat belts off of the pillars and then just another monkey wrench with a 17 millimeter um, sizing on it. So the next step after you've gathered your tools should be pretty much a no-brainer. Um, with this car, it's equipped with side curtain airbags, so you really wanna take the extra 10 seconds to disconnect the battery on the car. Um, a lot of people say you can get away with just having the key out of the ignition or in the ignition but turned off. I think it's worth it to go the extra step because obviously you don't wanna be you know, dealing with windshields breaking or the possibility of, you know, hurting yourself if it would to, you know, go off accidentally. It's just not something you want to get into. For an extra 10 seconds to pop the hood and disconnect it, it's totally worth it. So first of all, we're going to go into the A-pillar. Now this one's been recovered, so I'm not sure what the clip situation is behind here. 
So I'm just going to try to give it a gentle tug by peeling up this trim right here. And it should just pop right out, but we'll see. And yeah, it looks like it's coming out pretty easily. Now, I do know that there's supposed to be a clip up here. Oh, nice. The, uh, <laughs> that's definitely not safe. So the microphone for the airbag, which you can see, this is the airbag. The microphone cord is actually wrapped around the airbag. So yeah, that's definitely not cool. So I'm gonna take care of that right now because that is a huge, huge safety factor. And that is not a smart way to do that. I understand why they would want to do that because it seems to make sense as long as it wasn't an airbag. I mean, there's all kinds of lines in here and stuff. So when I install it, I'll probably wrap around them or use a, utilize a clip or something, but never wrap your uh, head unit's microphone around the airbag. I'm just blown away by that. And this is literally the first time I'm seeing that because the head unit was installed before I bought the car. I'm going to do the other side and then we'll move on to the next step together. All right, guys, so I am in the back of the car right now, and that is because we need to work on the B pillar, which just like the A pillar also has a side curtain airbag in it. Hopefully this one doesn't have a microphone cord wrapped around it, but um, in order to remove the seatbelt assembly from this, you just need that 17 millimeter socket that I told you about, and it should come right out. So let's do that. It's in there pretty tight. Thinking that there was a little bit of over tightening that happened. Um, now with this, there is a hinge with a plastic cover over this, but I actually popped mine out recently while I've been trying to figure out why this seatbelt is sticking. Uh, for some reason it wasn't going down, it was only going up. So that's another issue I'm going to address once I have it off. Um, I have the bolt out now. So we'll just set that to the side. And then working from the top down, it's pretty loose because it was already taken out. You can kind of pull away like that and then pull up and clip, clip, clip. Nothing appears to be broken. So yeah, it was already loosened up. So we're good to go there. So now we're moving on to the C-pillar. And just like the B, it has a plastic cover on it. I'm going to utilize my trusty flathead screwdriver here and just pop that cover off. Here again, another 17 millimeter socket is necessary. Much looser on this. The bolt on the driver's side front was very tight. So I'm wondering if that was also contributing to the uh, not being able to move it down. And then actually this piece will just pop right out. I'm just going to lay that here for now. And then I should be able to just work my way down on the edges of this. And it does appear that there was something hiding inside of there. I don't know if it was a piece of plastic or what, but it definitely shouldn't have been there. We'll find out here in a second. Oh, it's a piece of foam padding, so I guess it was supposed to be there. That's okay, it just kind of popped out of its, its clip. All right, this edge is coming out nicely. Alright guys, as you might have noticed, I was struggling a little bit with the C-pillar. I couldn't figure out what was holding it on, so I actually went home, did a little bit of research, and then came back. I also grabbed a light while I was there because I realized how dark the footage was, so I apologize for that. I thought it was going to show up better than it did. Um, as you can hear, in the meantime, it started raining, so I apologize also for that, but we are in a metal building with a, a metal roof, so you're going to get a bunch of that. But basically what I found out was um, all the YouTube videos I had been watching on removing the C-pillar 
this car for whatever reason is different. I don't know if it's R32 specific or not, but there's actually a couple of bolts at the bottom of the C pillar and they're tucked way back in there, but you can actually see the channel for one of them right there. And I did a little searching and I asked around on some forums and I'm being told that it's either an eight millimeter or a 10 millimeter bolt. So I'm gonna try to figure that out and uh, hopefully we can get the C pillar off. I got the C pillar off of this side and off of this side as well and then the little strip that comes up here across the back um, that's also taken out so that would be this piece it's just held in with a bunch of clips and luckily because it's been recovered before it wasn't very hard to get it off um, so yeah so there's that A pillar A pillar B pillar B pillar C pillar C pillar so now we can start moving on to the actual headliner in the car and next up is some of the things that are keeping the actual headliner in um, first of all four of these grab handles super easy to take out there's actually just like a little peg up here like a little lip that you can grab onto with a fingernail and they just fold down of course my fingernails are very short so it's a little bit more difficult and then just a phillips head screw on either side that's all that's holding it in so we'll just take those out and they're pretty loose Pretty easy to do. So there's one. And then two. Of course, the second one must be a little bit more trouble. It looks like some kind of glue or something from the rewrap got in there. The cool thing about when you take them out is you can actually close up the doors, put the screw back inside, and it kind of snaps in so you don't lose your screws which is a really nice feature. Okay, so next up on the agenda is the sun visors and the sunroof control and dome light. Mine is actually on the fritz right now and the cover was broke when I bought it, so I'm gonna need to replace that. But in the meantime, we can at least get the headliner and stuff done and then this part can just be purchased separately. I'll have it on order here shortly. Um, so first is just the cover for the sunroof motor and that just pops out. It's just held in with some clips. Um, and then let's move on to the actual visor. Now, if I remember correctly, these are just the actual side with the swing arm is just held on with a single Phillips head screw, which it is. So we'll take that out a while. And then the clip for that is kind of hooked. So you almost have to bring it out at sort of a swing see what's and then this little guy over here i believe it will just pop out with a flathead screwdriver there we go well that thing's all chewed up that's okay i'll just get another one i guess um and just like the other side two Phillips head screws, hold it in. I think the problem that I was running into with that cover was it appears that the blue is over top of foam, which may be double layered over the pre-existing foam. So it's so much fabric and foam that it was actually pushing out against it and it wasn't allowing the screwdriver to go into the little track. So I don't think I'm gonna be using any additional foaming when I redo it, um, it's just for visuals. I don't care how, you know, how comfy it is or whatever, because it's not really meant for that. And honestly, the, the padding on here is pretty, pretty thick. And then there is, I don't know if you can see or not because of the shadowing, but there is a visor light up here. And that is supposed to also just pop out with a flathead screwdriver. Every time I do this, it gives me anxiety because I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Okay, this appears to be coming out a little bit easier. I feel like there's glue still left from, like maybe they put it in when it wasn't ready to come out yet. Or what, what I mean is maybe they 
installed the headliner before it was dry and the glue went on to these other pieces. So there's the light and then you should just be able to squeeze these little tabs and pop right out. There you go. And it's actually an LED bulb, which is nice. Um, this actual controller I need to look at. I think there's a couple screws underneath the plastic. All right, guys, it is officially out of the car. Um, there was a little bit of a wiring harness up around the sunroof control and for those lights. Uh, you just have to pop it off and then make sure to glue it back in place. There's actually extra fabric, like a lip around the, the wires so you have an attachment point. But uh, I'm going to peel all this out and then we're going to go back to the house, get in out of the cold and this rain, and start working on recovering. See you in a bit. Alright guys, we are back at my apartment. Um, I covered up my dining room table with a, just a 99 cent store shower curtain that I bought on the way home just to kind of protect the table itself because once I'm done stripping the suede and the padding off of these, we're going to be installing a crushed black velvet and uh, using spray adhesive to do that. So we are ready to start covering. Um, I bought some of this 3M High Strength 90 contact adhesive. Um, some people said that the 77 was good enough, but I figure I'll go a little overkill with it um, and see how it goes. So I'm going to start off with the C pillars just because they have the kind of the biggest surface area out of the pillars. Um, I did pre-cut out roughly some of the fabric. As you can see, I'm going with a black crushed velvet. Um, it's a pretty versatile fabric. Um, I think it has a neat texture to it and it has lots of stretch so it's pretty forgiving as far as going around corners and things. So hopefully that should make this process pretty easy. And then once it's on it should look something like that, um, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So Three days later. So it's been a couple days since the last time I filmed. When we left off, I had finished covering a bunch of the pillars in black velvet. Um, I was really liking how it turned out. I let it all dry a couple days, and then Thanksgiving came and Black Friday, and you know, doing family stuff and general, you know, laziness. Um, I just kind of let it sit for a couple days. Um, and during that time, I don't know if it's because of the copious amounts of Jim Connor videos and Ken Block Hoonigan material I was watching, but I decided that I really had kind of lost my direction with this car and decided to tear everything off and start all over again. Um, I have a tendency to do that. Uh, I, I can get in the middle of a project and really like the way that it's turning out and then completely change my mind and start over from scratch. And this is no exception. So instead of doing it in fabric, I've actually decided to cover everything in bed liner. Um, the product that I'm going to be using is actually Herculiner, which comes in a gallon container like this. Um, I've used it before in other projects years ago. Um, it's basically the consistency of driveway sealant until you stir it up really good. So you want to make sure that you're buying a metal um, paint stirrer that can go into a drill because that's going to be really vital to it mixing properly. Um, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be fairly low maintenance. It's not going to have the, the padding and the thickness that the fabric did before. And honestly, I think it's going to be a really neat look. All 
All right, guys, so the pillar covers and the headliner are back in the car. It looks great. I would say the fitment's about 90 to 95%. It's not 100% yet because I am missing some of the clips that hold the panels in, um, and I figure that's just par for the course with any used car. I'm finding more and more of that as I take things apart and put them back together. Not a hard thing to do. I just need to find the parts and get them put back in. But uh, yeah, really stoked for how it looks, and I'm going to turn you guys around so you can see that as the outro to the video. But before I do that, I want to say thank you to those of you that subscribe to me and also those of you that follow me on my social media. Um, it's great that my numbers are climbing as quickly as they are. I'm kind of flabbergasted by it. But I hope to continue to grow and post new content for you guys. Um, I have some great video ideas and things I'm going to be doing in the next couple weeks. Um, weather permitting because we are getting into December. But uh, thank you guys again. For those of you that haven't already, make sure you're subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so you can see when I'm posting new content. Also, make sure you're following me on Facebook and Instagram at PA Street Scene. Um, I post to Instagram at least once, twice a day, and I try to post videos at least once a week. Um, the holiday kind of messed that up a little bit this week, but I'm hoping to get back into that, that routine. So thank you guys again. Have a great night. Take care.